G'day, I'm Cameron and today on our fourth episode of How to Make Stuff with Cameron I'm going to be showing you how to put together a cheap Chinese made CNC kit um, It's got stepper motors, stepper drive up, um, which is just a power board and it's also got a power supply so I'm going to show you how to wire all those up Now these aren't limited, like this won't be just useful for someone who's got a specific board which I have which is a TB6560 but you can use this stuff on pretty much any stepper motor board and with any stepper motors and with any power supply because it's all relatively universal. So um, hopefully you enjoy it and hopefully you find it a bit helpful. Okay, this is a stepper motor kit that I ordered from Hong Kong. Now it only cost me 250 bucks and I managed to get all this stuff. Now these here are stepper motors. I also, it also came with a fourth one but I don't have a fourth axis on my machine so I don't need it. This here is a driver board which has got all the protection and the you know inputs and stuff to basically control everything you could want. Now I got a professional model one so it also came with this manually controlled keypad and this um, little display as well and a nice shattered instruction CD so I had to unfortunately figure everything out without that. Um, there is another problem with this kit was it came with the only uh, input that it'll actually accept to you know run g-code is this LPT port which is a 25 pin old style computer port which you know used for printers and various things like that I'm um, so I'm gonna have to go buy myself a you know a, an adapter which you know they're not very common because you know no one really uses these anymore but you gotta do what you gotta do unfortunately I wish I'd sort of looked into that a bit better and found one with a better port but anyways uh, so over this end this is where the outputs come out now this controls the stepper motors as you can see I've sort of I've bound all the wires together um, and going over to here, this is our power supply. Now I'm going to show you how I wired all this stuff up, but I just wanted to give you a brief overview of all the components first. Now I've marked on this power lead, which is just an extension cord that I've chopped, the ground, the L and the N. Now the way you can figure these out without knowing the colour code of the wires is by getting yourself a multimeter. Now I'll just... Okay, now what you want to have the multimeter set on is you have it in your ohms in a, the 200 scale. Now, what you do is, as you can see, with it just sitting at one, that means it's not reading anything. Now, if you put it together, it shows you what the resistance. And now, because these are the two connectors, there's zero resistance there, and that's why it's reading zero, zero, zero. Now, to determine which wire goes to where, what you do is, after stripping, like cutting and stripping this, you want to take a little bit off, and then take the three wires out and strip them as well. You can use two. There's a couple of different kinds. Like these are just two of the common ones. You've got your manual wire strippers, which the cutters and crimpers and the strippers here or these sort of semi-automated ones which will do it for you but anyways uh, so you strip your wires what you do then and say I wanted to find ground I will hold the ground on there I'll take my go onto my ground port now obviously I don't want to bother taking these apart just because you know it's working and fine but you can it works exactly the same if the if the wire is not attached now as you can see it's zero, zero, zero. that means it's a connection between where I've got this pin and where I'm holding this one and it does the same for all three of them so this is a good, oop, this is a good way to determine which, uh, which wire goes to which plug. Another thing to be aware of about uh, power supplies is they often have a switch in them which mine is just in there it's got a little plaque over there telling you about that you can either choose between 240 volt and 110 being in Australia we want 240 volt but if you're in America you're going to want 110 now you can just change the switch by putting something skinny enough to fit through these little holes and moving the switch along okay this is the input output side of a 12 volt power supply now they might look slightly different but they should generally have similar markings now the power input is the LN and ground now as you can see the ground symbol it's not a G, it's this funny looking thing here, but that's what ground is. Now L and N is, positive, is the positive and negative that you get from your, um, your power lead. Now I've just chopped an extension cord to get my you know, cheap cable. Um, these two here, the V plus, the two V pluses are the uh, positive voltage and the comms for some reason are the negative voltage. But you know sometimes you'll just get, a, you know, you'll say other things. but. And on mine it says COM for some reason for negative. Now also the other thing they have often these power supplies have is an adjustable power supply. Now a little LED will go on and you've got a you can screw it in and out to change the voltage from 10 volts to I think mine goes to 15. But anyways I'll show you how these all like so this is the power in this is the power out. 
and you can have another you know thing that will go on the outside of that but I only need one now this is how you can tell which wires correlate to which coil in a stepper motor now how a stepper motor works is it has two coils inside it now what happens is you the stepper driver will pulse a current which will allow one coil to switch on and then the next one to switch on you can do there's a whole different number of ways you can make them you know work you can do like um double stepping or you can do staggered steps or you can even just do single steps and still make it work but it all works this wiring technique all works the same for all of them now what you got to do is determine which because i didn't this didn't come with a diagnostic and i couldn't find any information about these no brand stepper motors on the internet as to which wire uh, was you know which coil so you have to find out the positive the negative for each you know each one now what i did was i simply found out that you can by winding the stepper motor you know it's it's relatively easy to wind just by by hand one way you can figure out which wires are part of the coil without having to use a multimeter or any other you know any other equipment is simply just hold them together and it'll make it a lot more difficult like I'm having trouble moving that even though it's a small motor it's still putting up quite a lot of resistance so yeah you just hold them together and that way you can feel which two are you know in the same coil so you know that but also one thing that you take a note is say these two here because these the black one and this light one here are part of the same coil it even if you put this you know other one here with it it still will rotate just as easy as if it had no connection at all it only will do this if you're connected to one of the same coil something I'd like to mention is be very wary of these three um, pins here because I just brushed one of them with my thumb while trying to get contact on over here and it gave me a really good boot now it's 240 volts so it can kill you thankfully the main power switch tripped so you know I was safe but it friggin hurt and I threw a screwdriver across the room because of it now moving back on to testing the voltage I'm just going to get these two on here and get a stable there you go 10.32 so I'm going to take my screwdriver also drops it yeah, so let's put it back on there again now it's going to give it a twist now it's going down so let's go up I want to go 12 volts and a little bit more and go down a little bit It's very hard to get, there we go, boom, oh, close enough. 12.2, so I'm pretty happy with that. So, you know, I can always make it go up more if I want to need more power out of the stepper motors. But 12 volts is the recommended safe voltage for this particular one. But, so that's what I'm going to leave it at unless I get bigger stepper motors which require more current. Okay, this here's the driver board. Now it has the G-code reading software already programmed in, into it. And also underneath this heatsink it has the four driver uh, stepper drivers. Now down this end we have the pin ports. Now these are all the inputs and um, outputs for this little board except for the, you know the ones that go into your computer and to limit switches and stuff. This one here does the limit switches and um, stop switches like that. This one is the LPT connection which goes direct to the computer and this one here goes to the spindle as well as this one. I'm not too sure fully what this one does though. Like, I know it's meant to go to the spindle but I don't really know why there's a second one down here as well. Uh, this one here, the, the empty one, or not next to the spindle one, uh, go, is meant to go to the fourth axis but I haven't got that hooked up because my contraption's only three axes. Um, this first one here is the 12 volt in the ground. Now it says what these things are meant for behind here in this little writing. So that's sort of how I figured out, you know, uh, well, even though I didn't have instructions, I sort of managed to figure that out. Um, how they have it, you know, how they say it is, is like A negative, A positive, B, B negative, B positive. So what I did is after determining which two wires were connected on the same coil, I put the black one and the white one, like with the black one on the negative, because black is normally negative, so I use that logic to sort of help me out there. And it actually, and I'm, then I took the darkest one of the. I can't actually tell what colour they are to be honest with you. It's, you know, it could be in colour blind and all. Um, but I put the darkest colour in the negative on the next one, and the lightest colour. So so it was black on A negative, white on A positive, uh, grey or brown or whatever the fuck it is on uh, B 
negative and the lighter colored one on the positive. Now, it doesn't matter which one of these you swap, like if you swap them around because it's, you know, still run a stepper motor, just will run a different stepper motor. So, once you've got one wired up, you can, you know, do all of them and it will still work the same. But it doesn't actually damage it to play around, like, you know, I just get, uh, use one of them as a test, sort of play it around with moving them like black and whites and, you know, grey and whatever the other colour is around with each other just to sort of determine which way worked the best. And it turned out the way I put it in first worked the best, so I was pretty happy with that. Okay, now we can just use this controller to uh, move the motors manually. Unfortunately, you can only with the manual controller you can only move one motor at a time. So if, even if you press multiple ones, it still won't do it. But you can apparently program the G code with this thing as well, and it tells you where each you know axis is sitting on this little screen here. Thanks for watching this episode of How to Make Stuff with Cameron. Next time we're going to be finishing off my CNC machine. Uh, we're going to be installing all the stepper motors, uh, the drivers, uh, power supply, all the various components, so that it's sort of you know nice and neat doesn't have things hanging in the way and you know just making it inconvenient and also we don't want to look too ugly. Um, we're also going to be uh, making a wire basket just to hold various things for it like the cutting tips, tools, you know, that kind of stuff. And we're also going to be making a little vacuum fitting for it so it sort of self cleans to some degree anyway. Um, but yeah, please don't forget to like and subscribe and I look forward to seeing you next time.